Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the setup of the Amcrest IP2M-863EW-AI pan tilt zoom camera. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link to this in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I did a previous video on this camera where I unboxed it. So if you want to see the hardware involved, I'll put a link in the description to my Amcrest playlist where you can find that video. And I'll also probably be making other videos with this this camera, so I'll put those in the playlist too. So I'm doing this demonstration on an iPad, but this should work on an Android tablet or a smartphone, like an iPhone or an Android phone. So you want to go into your store, and I search for Amcrest View Pro for iPad on this one, but you can just do Amcrest View Pro and then find it and then download it. And I have already downloaded it, so I'll just open it. And I do already have this camera set up on here, but I can still show you how to set it up because I can set it up a second time. So you can see a plus on the screen now. You want to ignore that for now. You want to hit in the upper right hand corner where there's a little camera icon with like a menu. And when you open that up, it'll show your devices. You want to hit add device and then choose P2P. And we'll give this a name. I'll just name it PTZ2 for pan tilt zoom 2. I did a lowercase p. I don't know why, but it's there. Next, I want to enter in the serial number and I can tap on the QR code and I can scan the QR code on the camera. Now the camera is mounted outside. So I took a picture of that QR code. So I'm going to scan my phone, but I'm blurring that out because that is private information. So that is scanned. Next, you have username and password. The default is admin. So you want to change that. And I have already changed that. So this interface is kind of blocking it. Let's see if I can do that. So now I'm going to type in my new password. And below that, it says live view extra and playback extra. So this will have two choices here, main or extra. Main is high resolution. Extra is low resolution. So I'm on the same network as the camera right now. So I will do main and for playback, I will do main. If you're remote accessing this over a VPN, you may want to do extra so you can use the lower bandwidth feed, but you could try both. And certainly if you're on a cell phone or something and you have data you don't want to use up too much of, then you'd want to go with extra. So I'll hit start live view. And it did say device already exists. So if it didn't, it would just load. I thought maybe I could add this twice. It doesn't look like it. I will go in and open the one I already have but it works pretty much the same way. So here we have the default screen. It says face detection. That is a feature that's on the device, but it's not on by default. So normally you won't see that right away unless you set that up and you can't set any of that up on the app. So the app mostly has capabilities for viewing the camera. So if we go to the upper left menu, we have live view, playback, device manager, my save files, camera map, favorites, push notifications, settings, and help. We already talked about the right menu that shows multiple cameras. So let's go to the controls on the bottom. That's mostly what I want to focus on here. On the far left bottom, we have this little square with a four in it. If we tap that, we can set it up so we can look at multiple cameras. So I can add other cameras here. Let's add the front door. And then we can add, we can add the sky cam. It says driveway. I don't know why that's named like that. And the bottom right, see the garage. Let's try that. So here I can have four cameras. If I want to see one, I can double tap it and that will bring that up. I can double tap it to make it small again. So I can go between the different cameras. Looks like I have a package, I didn't know that. So let's go back to the pan tilt zoom camera. So the next two icons here are for microphone and audio. So if I tap that, it will say mic enabled. Untap it, it'll say disabled. Same with the audio. So I don't have a microphone or speaker connected to this. It does have wiring for that. So you can buy a microphone and speaker and hook it up to that if you want to have two-way audio. Next we have the pan tilt zoom control. I'm going to skip over that and go to HD here. And if we tap on that, we have HD and SD. So Right now we're in the SD mode, which is the standard definition. We can tap HD and we're in high def. If you look at the Amcrest logo down in the bottom right, I'll go back to the low res mode. You can see it's a little bit grainier in the standard def and then in high def, it's sharper. And that's true of all the text on the screen. So I want to skip over pan tilt zoom because I want to go into the high res mode. So we'll tap on that now. And that brings up a little joystick thing on the left. And on the right, we have our zoom, focus, aperture, and presets. So from here, I can pan, tilt. So on the right here, we have zoom. I can tap that. It'll bring up a plus or minus. So I can press plus or I can hold it down and that will zoom in. And this is an optical zoom, not a digital zoom. It does have a digital zoom capability. I don't think I have that enabled right now, but optical zoom is definitely better. So here I'm zoomed into the concrete. I can pan around on it. So there's a little bit of delay when you're panning. Well, when you're using a lot of these controls. So you'll get used to it after a while. You might overshoot things at first a little bit. So I can hit minus to zoom back out. Now when you zoom in, it does have autofocus turned on and there are different autofocus modes. You can't change them here, but if you go to the next icon below the magnifying glass for zoom, that is focus. So I can hit this button here 
to focus. Now it's already focused, so I'm unfocusing it. So now it's blurry. But if it is blurry, you can use this to manually focus it. And sometimes that comes in handy, especially if you have two things near each other or you're looking through a fence, you can manually set the zoom. And the third one down is the aperture. So this will change, I think it's the exposure. I'm not an expert on photography, so that made it really white and that made it dark. So most of the time the auto setting is going to take care of that, so you won't need to mess with that. So I'll zoom back out here. Now when I zoomed out, you can see that it reset that. I said aperture, I think it's the iris is what it's called. The third one here are presets. As far as I know, you can't change the presets on the device, but if you set it up in the web interface, you can access them here. So this is a little bit weird, but once you know how to use it, it's not too hard to understand. You have three zeros and you want to enter in the number of the preset. So I have one called preset one. So I'll move it up to one, I'll hit okay. And that will change to preset one. Next I can go to preset two. I'll hit okay. That will go to preset two. So that normally would zoom in on the license plate that's in the drive, but that car's gone right now. And then number three, I'll hit okay. That takes you up into the tree. So we can go back to my default here. I'll hit okay. And now we're back to preset one. So if you have certain things you'd like to look at, you can set up your presets in the web interface and then you can access those with the little flag icon there. So I think that's a much faster way to access things you access on a regular basis is to set up those presets. So let's check out the zoom here. So I may cut some things here for privacy reasons, but I'll try and show what I can. So I'm going to pan to the right. Okay, so I cut a little bit out there. So I'm going to zoom into a sign down the street. It's I think 220 feet away from this. I measured on a map online. So I'll try zooming in here. Pan up. So it's panning a little bit slow because I'm zoomed in. So here's a sign sort of to the left of the middle of the screen. I'd move it over so it was centered on the screen, but I want to keep the focus here. So you can see there's two trees here. They have good focus. So the camera is focusing on the trees, but I want to focus on the sign. So what I'll do here is I'll manually focus it. So I'm hitting minus on the focus and it's getting worse. So I'll hit plus. And there you go. We're focusing perfectly. So now I'm going to zoom out. I'll probably have to blur out that license plate. Maybe not. But here you can see how far away that was. Now I'll zoom back in. And we have to mess with that focus again. Sometimes it focuses in right away. And if I move the camera, it might change that focus to, yeah, it's mostly focusing on the tree. While we have the tree here, I'm zoomed in all the way. I might as well go up the tree and we can look at it. So if you want to inspect your trees, this is the tool to use. So I've logged in at night and I've seen insects crawling up and down this tree. It's pretty incredible. In the pitch dark, the night vision works really well like that. I mean, you're not gonna see their antenna or anything, but you can see bugs crawling up and down. So here you can see the detail of the tree. Now we can pan over to my other tree. That's the same tree. So there we panned over to this and it was out of focus and it auto focused itself. And this is my oak tree here. So you can really see that detail in the trunk. So this is high as I can get on the tree. Now I'll zoom out so you can kind of see how far away we were. 
on that. So that's enough with the tree. I want to go back to my preset for one. I'll hit OK. And there you go. It takes you right back, zooms out, and I have the view of my driveway. So next on the bottom we have snapshot. So I'll tap that. And that took a snapshot of the driveway. Next we can do video. So if I'll tap that, I'll start recording. And why don't I go to preset number three. And that will take us up to preset three. We'll go back to preset one. I'll tap recording again, and that will stop recording. I think it did, there we go, now it stopped recording. Next we have rotate, well it's flip and mirror actually. So right now, let's see, if I hit the one on the left, I don't think that's gonna do anything. Let's try the one on the right. Okay, that turned it upside down. The one on the left doesn't seem to do anything, and that may not be supported by this camera, but the one on the right is. So if you mounted the camera upside down, you could use that to flip the image. Although you can do that in the web interface also. The next is the night vision, so I just turned it off, or auto. So this has infrared night vision. So it has an infrared beam it sends out and that bounces off of things and it collects that back with an infrared sensitive camera and you can see in the pitch dark. This also has very good low light capabilities. So you can actually turn that off and it looks kind of like it's dark out, but you can see quite a bit of detail. So there may be times when you don't want to use the infrared night vision, you just want to use it just as is. And I'll show some samples of that. The next is image adjustment. We have brightness, contrast, I think that's saturation. I'm not sure what that one is. Forget what the two on the bottom are. One of them's probably saturation. I don't know, but it has a little reset here. So you can play around with those if you want to change the colors on it. I tend to not mess with those. And then we have a 30 seconds back. Next we have 30 seconds back. We're looking at live, so this isn't, it doesn't have like a DVR capability. And then we have a star that allows you to have favorites. And then we have close, so that will close this. So we took some snapshots, took a video. So if we go to the upper left, we can go to my saved files. And here we have the video we shot. So I will play that, or it's playing automatically. And it looks like you have some controls in the bottom. One of those is snapshot. So you can take a snapshot from the video. Then on the top we have video. Next one we have is just pictures. And here's the picture I took. So on the mount I have on this, this was a couple weeks ago, I think, actually now, there was a cicada coming out of its shell there, its skin. So I recorded that. So it's daytime right now, obviously, and I'll merge in some nighttime video so you can see what it looks like at night. I'll do it with the two different camera things. I don't know if I'll do voice work on it. I may just put little subtitles up on the different settings if I change them.
So it also has device manager on here. We can go to the camera. We can go to channel config, IPPTZ camera. And here we can change different settings here. So we have main and extra. These are the two channels. Extra would tend to be used for mobile. Main would be used if you're on network. So we have encoding here. We have H.264H. So that's H.264 high profile. You can use the newer H.265. So that's HEVC. So that should give you good quality with lower bandwidth. So we can turn video and audio on and off. We have resolution here. This is a 1080p camera. A lot of times you want a higher resolution camera so you can get more detail. The nice thing about the pan tilt zoom camera is that you can zoom in and get that detail. So there may be situations where you don't need as high a resolution camera if you're using this. And then we have our frame rate. So that goes one to 60 and the bit rate, we have constant bit rate or variable bit rate. And I think most of these are the defaults. And then we have the bit rate here, you can change that. So if you go into the web interface, I think it's a little easier to configure, but if you do need to tweak things, you can do it right here in the interface too. And earlier I said you don't want to tap on the plus, but you can tap on it and add cameras once they're set up. And I don't know that I mentioned, but I put this on the corner of my house. I made a little mount, so I don't want to invade my neighbor's privacy but I can look up the side of my house. So I could probably move this out from the gutter a little ways because it kind of blocks the view. But I didn't realize that until I started testing it out. Now, if I go down all the way, this has a flip feature. So I'm going down, down, down. You'll see here, it will do a little flip. And now if I hold down, it will start going up, but if I let go, then I need to go up again. So it's a special auto flip feature. That's kind of neat. And I think I went back to low res mode here, so. Go back to high res, there we go. It probably assumes you want low res mode when you're on a mobile app, because a lot of times you do. So that's the Amcrest 1080p pan tilt zoom outdoor IP PoE camera. It has the AI technology. It doesn't have the AI capabilities in the app on the phone or the mobile. You need to use the web browser to do that. But as I've shown in this video, you can access the camera from a mobile app and you can pan, tilt, zoom, you can record. So it's a nice tool to have. If you're away from the house and you want to check on something, you have that capability here. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.